So I am no longer putting the CR500 in this cross card. I'm gonna be putting that Suzuki Jigster 600 motorcycle engine with over 100 horsepower. I think it's gonna be perfect. The reason why I'm not putting this engine in here is because I changed my mind. It's gonna be almost impossible to start with it in the frame. I wanna build something to compete and outperform the competition and I think this is the perfect thing to do. But this thing will be going towards something big. It's gonna be on two wheels. I just feel like that's the only way to give this thing justice as it really wasn't getting enough attention. And I'm building this cross car to very high standards with lots of safety precautions in mind. So I think it'd be aight. This is gonna be a mock-up motor, but we're actually gonna be stealing the motor off the Chinese buggy that I just got. So guys, I'm super excited and nervous for this, but let's go ahead and jump right into the build. The motor is actually the same length as the CR500. It's just almost three times as wide. It's, it's gonna be about that wide. Fortunately, I'm gonna have to cut off all this and probably redo the whole rear end. So I put the motor in backwards by accident. Or did I? Hold up. Yeah, I did put it in backwards. So now I'm in the process of extending the rear end and I've just been thinking generally with longer wheelbases it's going to handle better and it's going to be a lot harder to like wheelie. The downside is you add weight and you sacrifice looks and there's probably a few other things I'm missing out but I just want to find that perfect balance so I think I'm going to stretch it about one foot in the back. It's going to put the wheelbase at around six feet so yeah. Actually, I don't really like how that looks. It's gonna make the motor mounting a little bit tricky, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off. And I do not want the oil pan going below the frame. That way, if we ever bottom out, it might crack or break, so yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm much happier with how that looks and it's gonna make the engine uh, a lot easier to mount. I still wanna do some research and figure out what angle is best to mount the engine in. I know motorcycles have them uh, pretty far forward, but if I can get away with running it a little bit more straight, then uh, I'd be pretty happy, but if not. Well guys, I'm fully committed at this point, but there's a lot of things that I'm actually gonna have to change. Uh, for one, I actually wanna redo this roll cage with bigger tubing and I might have to redo the front suspension. I'm gonna need as much strength as I can if I plan on going to the drag strip, which I am gonna go to the drag strip. I'm not gonna be mounting the engine in this video just because I wanna do some research. So I'm actually gonna start working on the rear spindles. I'm gonna be building those from scratch. So my friend VTune said I'm welcome to come to this shop. I know some of you guys might know him. He's gonna help me cut out some tabs and he said I'm welcome to come. So yeah, let's go ahead and head over to VTunes. Hey boss. What's going on? Don't be... you, you know, you gotta keep the shop clean. 
Right, V Tune? Yeah, we're about to do some cutting here. So guys, I had a local machine shop machine these uh, bearing inserts for me, and they have a little ridge right there so that the bearing doesn't slide out. These are Miata bearings, and I want to use the Miata axles because they're really tough. What I'm basically doing is building my own rear spindle for the cross cart, something that's really light but strong. I had my friend VTune cut these tabs out for me, and that's really just for camber gain. Okay guys, so the spindles are done and I've pressed the hubs in. They turn out really nice. Now this is a stock Miata spindle and this thing weighs about 14 pounds. This stock Miata spindle is just way too heavy duty. It's way too big and bulky, which these only weigh about three or four pounds. So that is a huge weight saving. This is gonna be plenty strong and even for 100 horsepower, it should be plenty. I'm really happy with how these spindles turn out. So Swag Offroad sent me a bunch of their goodies to install on my tools. What Swag Offroad does is they make kits for existing tools that make them way better. For example, this tubing notcher from JD Squared, and they also do a lot of Harbor Freight tool upgrades. So guys, I'm excited to see what's inside this box. So this is their upgrade kit for the Harbor Freight tubing roller. I actually recently got this, and I'm going to be excited to try it out for a future project. But basically you weld these wings onto the tubing roller and they make it much more efficient and you can bend larger capacity tubing. You can go all the way up to 2 inches. It's really simple to do. Their products are DIY oriented and they're pretty budget friendly. So guys, I highly recommend you check over Swag Off Road. They also sent me a few other goodies like this uh, press brake. But I'll be going more in depth on those in future videos. So I really appreciate Swag Off Road. These are some really nice... DIY kits that you can put together and they're really budget friendly uh, So be sure to check out the links in the description and support swag off road So guys, that's all I had in store for this video if you enjoyed it Be sure to hit that like button down below, but I really got to thank swag off road for sending me their kits They sent me like a few different kits that I haven't even uh, Recorded or unboxed yet so big shout out to them and I'd highly appreciate if you guys checked out their website at the very least So yeah guys, I'll have to see you in the next video Stay tuned for more. Peace and God bless.